if ever you needed to be convinced of the genius of Unbound, Katie Brandt. Katie Brandt. Brilliant. Robert Llewellyn's here as well. Fucking hell. If you'd have told me when I was a child you'd be sharing the stage with Katie Brandt and Robert Llewellyn, I'll say. Stephen Fry not coming as well, no? <laughs> And well done, Katie. Nice to see women on QI. Um, by 2018, they will have brown and black people on there too, so... <laughs> progress is being fucking made. And I hear rumours that Stephen is gay. So, every food group accounted for. Talking of food groups, how are you? Are you cold down there at the front? Fuck, yeah, I'm from Glasgow, I'm not finding it cold. You suffering? Um, you're going to suffer yet more. I've got the mic in my hand. Um, uh, so, my book is... Uh, listen, here's the thing. Uh, let me not just champion my... In fact, let me not champion my book at all. Mine is slightly better than average. <laughs> Roberts is brilliant. Katie's, I think, is going to be excellent. I'm very excited to be part of something that unfolds. Um, and I, I do believe her to be hugely talented. And Roberts just really good looking. Um, <laughs> And George, George Shopping is poetry, just a fucking immense character. Um, I can't be insincere, I don't know the others that well, so I can't blow smoke up their arses. But one of them's a Virgoan. <laughs> so it'll be a tidy book, if nothing else. Thank you. Uh, mine's about food. It's called The Month of Sundays, here's how it works. Because I think, if you, are you, I'm at that age now, 27. <laughs> where I can't count. Um, I'm at the age now where I remember how special Sunday used to be. I remember that you couldn't buy anything on a Sunday. I remember that there wasn't a football match on a Sunday. I remember that people actually went to religious institutes on a Sunday and continued to delude themselves for the rest of the week. But what was lovely about a Sunday, even in my house, was the food, because that was the day my mum cooked. Because I should explain, my dad worked as a teacher uh, for 40 hours a week. And um, much, as, um, much as it is today as a person of colour, um, he watched everyone promoted above him and then decided he'd run a business as well as be a teacher. So he had um, he ran a business and was a teacher, so he was uh, yeah. about 90 hours a week. My mum had an obsession with racial stereotypes, so opened a shop. Take your fucking time. I know this is good stuff. Do you know what I mean? And if you're not laughing, it's because you're not bright enough. <laughs> My mom opened the shop, worked 13 hours a day, uh, Monday to Saturday, and then on a Sunday, she worked seven hours. Lazy. Um, I came home on a Sunday, and this is true, because she was a woman, she didn't have a daughter, and we could have, you know, patriarchal times. Sunday, she was like a dervish that never, never tired of turning. And top to bottom, she'd hoover, clean, vacuum, do the, the uniforms. And at the end of the Sunday evening, she would cook. And she'd cook a big pot of lamb curry and a big pot of dal. And me, my dad, and my two brothers, the Coley men, that night on a Sunday would sit. And I don't mind telling you, we would eat like royalty. Big bowl of lamb curry, big bowl of dal. And Leila, I tell you, on a Sunday night, Everything was perfect in our world. On a Monday night, slightly smaller bowl of lamb curry, small bowl of dal. The Coley men ate like landed gentry. And you know, the world was a pretty good place. Tuesday night, a small bowl of lamb, a couple of tablespoons of dal. Coley men ate like the petty bourgeoisie we were. And the world was fine. Had its ups and had its downs. Wednesday night, Mum would mix them. And as soon as that went to the table, my dad would start. It's, it's, it's Wednesday night mantra. Same bloody food as the bloody fucking Wednesday. <laughs> Working hundred hours a week, bloody same bloody food. Actually, quick, quick aside for a minute, 
don't know if there's any people of colour here, right? Because it's different for us, Jews and people of colour. Our parents swore at us in a different way. My dad, my dad had a favourite Punjabi swear word. And as an English one, his uh, Punjabi one was Ullu Gabata. Ullu Gabata. My blood would freeze when I heard that. Ullu Gabata. Do you know what Ullu Gabata means? Son of an owl. <laughs> I mean, we're talking 1978, before fucking Harry Potter. <laughs> before owls were cool, yeah? And he would say to me, I'd say, in my head, I'd think, well, who are you having to go out there, Dad? Because you're the fucking owl if I'm the child of an owl. And his favourite English one was, bloody bastard, bastard, bloody bastard, ba you bloody bastard. And again, I thought, Dad, that's surely a comment you're passing on your own marital arrangements with Mum. Never seen a brown man move so quickly as when I actually shared that thought with him. Beat the living shit out of me. So, because beating was fine in those days. So, on this Wednesday, my mum would have mixed them. My dad would start moaning, and my mum would go out the kitchen. She'd get a handful of mint, a green apple, some chilies, salt, pepper, sugar, and chip shop vinegar, and blend these together to make the most incredible chutney I've ever tasted. Sort of chutney. Chutney I cook on stage, actually. I've cooked it on stage 200 times. It is the one thing people walk away remembering. It's incredible. That's what Sunday was about for me, was waiting for the chutney. And I think we've lost a sense of our Sundays with, you know, again, we didn't have Sunday lunches in our house, because that's kind of British, a white British thing. So that's what I'm trying to do with the book, is bring back a sense of Sunday. Bring back a sense of food that brings people together. We've got 31 events, we're still looking for more events. So basically you buy an event, you buy a chapter. So if you want me to come and cook, I don't know, for Islington Council, you need to pay for it, you know, love. Um, well, you do get me at a very good mate's rate, right? you know that's a signal. Boom, you get me? Yeah, I'll come and cook for Sky. Um, and then we come and we did the first one on Sunday, which is quite so nice to be back here again, John. We went to an allotment in Nottingham. And there's a charity there that are, are making juices. They've got, you know, the, the juice, the kind of food uh, blenders attached to bicycles, static bicycles. So as you cycle, it blends. And they, what they want to do is they've got kids with learning difficulties um, coming onto the allotment, getting, you know, their hands dirty in, you know, in the ground, growing vegetables. And they wanted some ideas of what they could cook with the vegetables and different fruit we could use. Um, so we made some... Uh, strawberry and raspberry lussies. Great. No dogs were harmed in the making of those drinks. <laughs> it's got to be a joke about a mine shaft there. Work it out. Um, and we made some pakoras using leeks, sweet potato, potato, chard, spinach, using stuff that was grown on the allotment. It was an incredible day. We met some amazing people. And um, yeah, it was just very privileged. I felt very privileged to be part of Britain that day, just kind of part of. Just part of the honesty of that project. So we're doing um, a few other ones coming up. We're doing a, an alternative Jewish Sabbath. That, um, any Jews here? L love Jews, love Jews. My favorite Jewish joke. <sighs> one, uh, one woman the other says, uh, at a wedding she goes, the food at this wedding is terrible. The other one says, yes, and the portions are small. Again, I know that's good. <laughs> I know that's good. <laughs> Is that a brilliant Jewish joke? Um, Mrs. Goldberg, Mrs. Epstein are sitting on a park bench. One says, oh, how's everything? Was all not great. What's wrong with your son, Solly? Yeah. The business again. No, no, the business is fine. He's got problems with his head. He's going to see a shrink. What did the shrink say? Yeah, he's got some sort of complex, electro complex. Electrish metro. So long as he loves his mum, everything will be fine. <laughs> Again, um, the multiple awards I've won for swimming mostly make me know that that was a good joke. Um, so you can buy the book, obviously, you can buy chapters. Um, it's great fun. Um, so we've got this recipe, so these instructions. So for the Sunday's adventure, we'll have uh, the pakora recipes in there. Um, which, you know what? Best pakoras I've made in my life. On fucking stoves in the middle of an allotment. Beautiful. 
Lussies and Chutneys, the Chutney I just spoke about, we actually made there. I thought it'd be nice to start with that. Um, each chapter's got at least three recipes in it and the story of the chapter. Um, and 10% of all the money raised goes to uh, a homelessness shelter that I'm attached to in, um, in Islington. Uh, it's privately run, there's no government funding. Um, it does see, just seem a little strange sometimes that we sit um, with our privileged lives complaining about um, a slightly oversalted foie gras um, as people sleep rough um, and don't have enough to eat. So that's sort of what we're trying to do with that. But if you don't like the sound of mine, fine, I understand. Do you know what I mean? I'm a bit of shit. But do look at the rest of the books on the side. There are books on the side that the publishing industry is too arrogant to sign up. There are books on this site that the public industry wishes it could sign up, and then there's mine. <laughs> um, know this, John Mitchison is a god. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you.